SpaceX has been making notable progress in space exploration, especially with the upcoming third launch of the Starship. We are getting into the latest space news, including SpaceX tests. Their Starship Lunar Elevator, Stoke Space CEO Dr. Andy Lapsa talks design philosophy, and NASA greenlights two solar airplanes for missions on Mars and Venus. A significant development at the launch site is the transformation of the tank farm, a key component in the launch infrastructure. However, SpaceX recently faced a challenging problem with the tank farm. In this video, we bring you exclusive future updates on the Starship and groundbreaking developments from SpaceX. In this highly anticipated video, we reveal the next flight candidates for Starship's upcoming third mission. Join us as we dive into the details and unleash the latest exciting news surrounding the Starship rocket. In response, they implemented a creative and effective solution, showcasing their ability to tackle complex issues in space technology. Concerning details about the Starship's development which we will explore in this video join us in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St but before we dive into the details, make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates on the Starship and other groundbreaking developments from SpaceX. Since its inception in 2021, the tank farm at SpaceX's launch site has been significantly upgraded to better serve the needs of the Starship and Super Heavy rockets. These enhancements focus on the storage and supply of liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Liquid methane is chosen for its efficiency and potential reusability in rocket propulsion. This cleaner burning fuel reduces engine residue, aiding in SpaceX's goal of rapidly reusing rockets. Liquid oxygen, used as the oxidizer, is also critical for combustion in space where atmospheric oxygen is unavailable. Stored in a liquid state at extremely low temperatures, it is vital for maintaining high-density fuel storage and maximizing rocket thrust. The tank farm's upgrades have centered around improving the storage tank's ability to keep these propellants in their required liquid state. This involves maintaining very low temperatures to prevent the propellants from boiling off. The piping and delivery systems of the tank farm have also been improved to handle the high flow rates needed for efficient rocket fueling, focusing on creating systems that are both leak-proof and highly reliable. Additionally, automated monitoring systems have been installed to provide real-time data on the levels, temperatures, and pressures of the propellants. This technology ensures more accurate fueling and enhances safety measures. The layout of the tank farm has been reorganized to better support SpaceX's growing operational needs. This includes optimizing the arrangement of tanks and infrastructure to improve access for maintenance, reduce turnaround times for fueling, and integrate more effectively with the overall launch pad systems. Over the past weekend, SpaceX workers were seen removing one of the eight vertical tanks near the launch tower. This activity marks a significant change in SpaceX's approach to its tank farm infrastructure, suggesting a strategic shift from the use of vertical tanks which had been anticipated by many in the aerospace community. The change was partly driven by the experiences from the first two Starship launches. As we all remember, the orbital launch caused notable damage to the vertical tanks, highlighting the need for a more robust infrastructure. The second launch, while less damaging, still impacted these tanks, underscoring the potential need for replacement to ensure operational integrity and safety. Musk and SpaceX have responded to these challenges by rethinking the tank farm's layout and equipment. The company is now moving towards horizontal vacuum insulated tank referred to as hot dog tanks, due to their shape and size. These new tanks are better suited to meet the rigorous demands of space launches, offering improved conditions for storing propellants like liquid methane and oxygen. The previous vertical tanks had several limitations, including issues with maintaining the methane at the required specifications complications in filling them with water for testing purposes, and their proximity to the launch pad which posed safety risks. The new horizontal tanks are designed to mitigate these issues. They offer greater stability, a lower center of gravity, and are easier to maintain and clean, making them more adaptable for storing various chemicals. The introduction of these horizontal tanks is part of the preparations for the upcoming third Starship flight. The efficiency of SpaceX's operations was demonstrated by the rapid removal of the older tanks, suggesting a smooth and swift installation process for the new tanks. Initially, the focus was on removing the tanks that were either no longer functional or had suffered significant damage. 
After the first tank was taken down, the process was repeated with a neighboring tank. Furthermore, SpaceX and NASA, as a NASA article posted on December 21, gave us our first look at the elevator designed for the human landing system Starship. Built at the SpaceX facility in Hawthorne, California, the prototype mobility equipment is made up of a full-sized open-air car or basket in this case, which operates on a scaled-down version of the cable and rail system that is intended to be built on the Starship vehicle that is scheduled to take a NASA crew of astronauts to the lunar surface in 2025. For this test, astronauts Nicole Mann and Doug Wheelock got suited up in bulky approximations of the lunar EVA suits that NASA will be using and attempted to use the controls while wearing those clunky gloves. Gate latches, ramped appointment gear, and movement with proxy cargo were all tested. This elevator is intended to carry astronauts, cargo, and even vehicles like the Flex Rover to and from the landed HLS Starship. So the engineers need to know just how difficult it is to use while wearing an EVA suit. A full-scale elevator will be enormous as well, operating up a 50-meter starship in 1-6th Earth's gravity which will be tricky to manage, so obviously this is just the first of many tests that will need to be done on this system, but if they're already at interface testing with suited astronauts, that's a pretty good sign. However, it looks like the SpaceX team are still getting the next starship ready to launch, so there's no rush yet. After a very successful 2023, Stoke Space CEO Drive Andy Lapsa sat down with the folks at NASA Spaceflight to give more details on his company's unique launch vehicle and the design philosophy that led to its unconventional makeup. Stoke had gained a small following thanks to a video by the everyday astronaut detailing the company's second stage and its unique heat shield and thruster technologies. That was back in February and after almost a year of work on the prototype of their Nova rocket, we hadn't actually heard much from Stoke until January 7 when Dr. Lapsa sat down with John Galloway from NASA Spaceflight. Dr. Lapsa is an engineer by trade who has worked previously with Blue Origin on their B-4 engines. In fact, many of the barely 100 technicians and experts working for Stoke come from other companies in the industry like Blue Origin and SpaceX. Nothing made that clear than the way Dr. Lapsa described the systems of their reusable upper stage, the one featured in previous tests and that video we mentioned. It's no mistake that the second stage of the Nova rocket, as it's being called, is getting so much attention. Dr. Lapsa says that it's the most important part of the rocket. Seeing the success of reusable pioneers like SpaceX, Stoke decided to go all in. Everything about the rocket is designed for reusability, especially the second stage, which Stoke believes is the key to making their rocket an industry leader. Everything about the design of this part of the vehicle has been designed to reduce weight, waste, and time. A heat shield made without heavy tiles or ablative material and cooled by the same cryogenic hydrogen fuel they already carry into orbit with them saves on weight. 30 engine nozzles arranged around the rim of the rocket to disperse weight directly to the structure, saving them the need to fortify their internal fuel tanks. A thruster control software package that eliminates the need for gimbling engines and the dynamic seals that often break down on them. Payload doors instead of disposable fairing, which allows the upper stage to both deploy a payload and return with one safely, and could even be used to capture space trash. The Stokes CEO talked about all of these as a way of explaining how the team went from one innovation to the next by solving small problems in the way of their goal, which was to offer a cheap and easy medium lift solution with a fast turnaround. He explained that right now pretty much the only name in reusable fast launch services was SpaceX. That's going to be changing in 2024 as other companies like Blue Origin start launching their own vehicles, but there is a huge gap in the medium lift market that's only being served by a few companies and most of them use disposable rockets and take a while to get back to the pad after a launch. And so this rocket is being designed to be as fast as possible, using a reliable and safe landing system to keep their second stage safe as well as reducing the amount of parts that can fail so that refurbishment is quick. That's why so much of the second stage on Nova is built with a no part is the best part ideology. No gimbling engines means less to fix, no hefty heat shield tiles means no technicians trying to glue them back on after each flight provided their landing systems can work as well as they want them to, Stoke's second stage shouldn't need repairing after every flight. As for the first stage booster, well it might look a bit familiar and that's because the engineers at Stokes are taking a lot of inspiration from the Falcon 9, which is why less time is being spent on it. SpaceX already proved how a booster can be flown and reused for the last 9 years and as we said, many of Stokes' team worked on those same systems. 
Dr. Lapsus says that in the future they would like to try making a crude version too, but it's just not in the cars right now. Designing for a crew means life support systems and backups for their landing systems, which is extra weight and complexity that just doesn't make sense for the type of customer. Stoke is trying to impress, namely satellite services and station support missions. But that seems to be the right call, as with their efficient approach to design Stoke managed to score themselves $100 million in new investment funding back in October as a result of their outstanding hopper tests just a week before that showed a huge leap in their technology from their everyday astronaut interview. Since the new year comes a new round of funding for projects in NASA's Innovative Advanced Concepts Program. NASA has used this program for over a decade, fostering interesting new technologies to help in their missions, which has led to some pretty wild concepts getting a chance for testing when they might not have. This year a series of hopeful companies have had their concepts selected, and two of them revolve around the idea of solar-powered planes for use on other planets, which isn't a lot but it's weird it happened twice. The first and most promising is Maggie, the Mars Aerial and Ground Global Intelligent Explorer. Riding on the success of the Mars Helicopter Robot Ingenuity, Florida-based company CoFlow Jet has developed a fixed-wing solar-powered flying exploration drone with some very slick capabilities. Those claim to fame is a type of vertical takeoff and landing technology they've developed using an electric, high-efficiency jet and powered flaps. It's a zero-emission system that has a lot of industry weight behind its development, DARPA being just one organization CoFlow credits with supporting their system's development. The plan for Maggie is to create a VTOL aircraft that can both fly in the thin Martian atmosphere and interface with other Martian scientific missions, all while spending huge amounts of time in the air. According to the NIAC briefing, Maggie should be able to fly 179 kilometers over about 7 days at an altitude of 1,000 meters before needing to land and fully recharge using its solar panels which are mounted on the wings and body of the flyer. The company believes that Maggie should be able to explore the entirety of the Martian surface and with the new NASA research grants, CoFlow can begin testing in a simulated Martian environment to prove that their plane is up to the task. And Mars isn't the only place NASA thinks solar planes can be useful. Ingenuity proved that our robotics and automatic piloting software has gotten to the point where flying robots on other planets is a workable idea, and even though the concepts being tested in the NIAC programs are years away from becoming full missions, it looks like NASA is very interested in making ExoFlight a reality. Currently, SpaceX is waiting for a new commercial launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration, which is dependent on the completion of the FAA's investigation into the failure of the second integrated flight test. As SpaceX prepares for NASA's Artemis III mission, scheduled for late 2025 or 2026, the timeline becomes a critical factor in Starship's development, achieving a fully successful launch is paramount for the privately funded program. SpaceX's approach, emphasizing frequent test flights and swift iteration, is indicative of their commitment to advancing space exploration, and that's all for today's update. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time.